Welcome to HealthyAyurveda.com. I'm Dr. Mike Dhaliwal, Vedic Sage. Today we'll begin discussing Mamsadhatu. Mamsadhatu being that which most closely resembles muscular tissue. Being predominantly of the earth element and knowing that water and earth are kapha in nature. Kapha being that which provides structure and support. Similarly, the function of Mamsadhatu is plastering and covering which provides protection and and support to the internal organs. Mamsadhatu also allows for movement and just about all activities of the body, the karma and kriyas, are controlled by the function of Mamsadhatu. Muscle cells are excitable, meaning they respond to stimuli, allowing for contractility, essentially shortening, which generates a pulling force, and it's this pulling force as being the basis of movement. Specialized cell types provide specialized functions, for example, striated, multinucleated skeletal muscle cells allows for voluntary motion, and this allows for the voluntary movement of our arms, legs, facial expressions, etc. Cardiac muscle cells, which are interconnected by intercalated discs, have gap junctions, allowing for signal transmission needed for contraction, and this allows the heart to act as a pump, which provides movement of blood, this movement of blood being circulation. Equally important, are smooth muscle cells which are responsible for involuntary contractions and are found within the walls of blood vessels and hollow organs such as the gastrointestinal tract, the bladder, and the uterus. These smooth muscle cells allows for movement within these channels, for example, movement within the gastrointestinal tract, movement of urine within the urinary tract, and even more miraculous, the movement of the fetus through the birth canal. From an Ayurvedic perspective, we can think Think of muscle cells or mamsadhatu as being the organ which converts chemical energy, chemical energy being the electrolytes within blood, and converting this chemical electrical energy into mechanical energy of movement. Ayurveda explains that dhatus are formed in a successive manner. Rakta is formed from the transformation of rasa into rakta, and mamsadhatu is formed from the transformation of rakta into mamsadhatu. Just as the lotus grows from mud. Similarly, Mamsadhatu grows from Rectodatu. Being Datu and therefore having byproducts, the superior byproducts of Mamsadhatu are skin and subcutaneous fat. And taking into consideration Mamsa Vahasrotas, this helps to explain the formation of fascia and small tendons. Fascia is connective tissue that attaches, stabilizes, and separates muscles from other internal organs. Hence the function of mamsadhatu being that of plastering along with structure and support. Tendons are connective tissue that connects muscle to bone and tendons and muscle work together in order to exert a force required for movement. And the inferior byproducts of mamsadhatu are called kamala. Ka means space, mala means impurity. Therefore, the inferior byproducts of mamsadhatu remove the impurities in the form of nasal crust, earwax, sub Sebaceous secretions, tartar on teeth, and smegma. Another byproduct of Mamsadhatu are the very precursors required for the formation of the succeeding Datu, the succeeding Datu being Mida Datu or adipose fat tissue. Those individuals having excellence of Mamsadhatu are described as having a stable and beautiful appearance. Sushruta describes Mamsasara, those having well developed muscles. And there's even a psychological component to Mamsadhatu such that optimal Mamsadhatu brings about confidence, courage, and determination, as well as optimal Mamsadhatu brings about happiness, strength, and longevity. Okay guys, this is just a very basic introduction to Mamsadhatu. In the next two videos, we'll discuss the manifestation of increased and decreased Mamsadhatu with some considerations for these very considerations. Hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, be well.